Hi, welcome back to Biology. This is Mr. Kowalski. Welcome to our biology class. Uh, we've been talking about genetics. Uh, last time we talked about Gregor Mendel. We talked about basic genetics. And we just talked about, you know, dominant, recessive. We learned some of the terms homozygous, heterozygous, genotype, phenotype. Uh, well, today uh, we're going to go past some of that basic stuff because I'm pretty sure uh, if you've seen the, the first one, you probably could get the hang of it. You know, the big uh, T's and little T's or, and uh, the big letter obviously covers up the little letter. If not, I would suggest you go back and do some of those practice assignments uh, that are available on the website, mishkabuski.wordpress.com. But if you got the hang of this stuff, then you're ready to move on to advanced genetics. And we're going to take it slow. We're only going to do two uh, the types of crosses for advanced genetics, uh, and then there's actually two. Uh, or three more that we're going to do later on, but we're just going to stick with what's called incomplete and co-dominance today, okay? So think back to what we talked about last time. Last time we talked about we had two parents. We had the purple flower and the white flower, okay? And we, when we crossed them, the white gene seemed to disappear, and then it came back later on in further generations, okay? We're going to do a similar cross today. We've got a red flower and a white flower, okay? Now let's see what happens when we cross these two flowers, okay? If you think back to yesterday, uh, you know, logic would say, well, purple and white, uh, the purple covered the white, and we got all purple, so in this one we should get all red, right? Let's see what happens. There you go. So we've got 16 pink flowers from red and white parents, okay? Why did this happen? Did the red and white gene morph into some kind of pink gene? Uh, or did it go from being big R, little r, to now it's a P, a big P, little p, or something like that? And what happened? Well, the only real way to know what happened is to take two of those offspring now and cross them and then see what the result is, okay? Now, again, logic would say if I have two pink parents, all the babies should be pink. But actually what happens is that red and white gene seem to reappear. Now, why is that? Why does that occur, okay? What, what's going on exactly, okay? Well, this is known as incomplete dominance. Incomplete dominance means that one gene does not completely cover the other and instead they kind of blend together, okay? So I'm going to make my cross here for this, uh, for this example, okay? And I'm going to show you what actually happens, right? So I have my red flower, and we're going to call that big R, big R, okay? And then I have my white flower, okay? Now for our examples, when we do incomplete dominance in this class, we're going to use two different letters for incomplete dominance. You could still do bigs and littles, and it would still work out and make sense, uh, but for some of the stuff we're going to do later on, it just makes it easier just to do two different letters, okay? It's up to you whatever your preference is. You could do big R's and little R's, okay, just as long as you know that the heterozygous is the blended one, okay? But I'm going to do two different letters, uh, but again, it's done either way. It's fine with me, okay? So I'm crossing red with white. So the red is big R, big R. That's the first parent. And then WW, okay, would be the second parent, okay? So when I cross red and white, I bring my R's down and my W's across, Okay, and when I do that, okay, all of my offspring then are R, W, each one of the boxes. So say I have a red and a white gene, and they're both showing up. And so they actually blend together in incomplete dominance, and they show up as a blending of it. So red and white would make pink. So that's incomplete dominance, okay? So let's take that same idea okay, that we just talked about, incomplete dominance, where they're blending, and let's do the same thing with cows, okay? This is a red cow and a white cow, okay? They have red fur. Okay, so if I cross them, what should happen? Well, if I think back to the other example, I should get a pink cow. So this is where strawberry milk comes from. Oh, my God, all the mysteries of the universe have all been solved for me, okay? But what actually happens, oh, sorry, my camera is freaking out. What actually happens, okay, is that when I blend my red and my white cow and they have offspring, that offspring ends up being both red and white. Actually, that's known as being roan. So what's going on? How come sometimes it's pink? Uh, in some organisms, but then other times it's red and white. What exactly is happening, okay? Well, this is known as being co-dominance. And if you think about the prefix co, meaning with or together, okay, they actually both show up. They, they show up together at the same time, side by side, okay? So it's the same cross. It's still big R's and big W's, okay? And then all the offspring are RW, okay? But what ends up happening then, instead of the cow having pink fur and being a blending of the traits, it has red fur and white fur being grown, which means that it, it looks like both colors show up. Okay, so that's co-dominance. Okay, this is how sometimes flowers end up with multiple colors on their petals. Okay, so here's an example, and I notice as I look at it that the purple uh, bars there have kind of crossed, uh, not where they're supposed to be. But I've got King Purpley here in the in the kingdom of purple, and in order to be king or queen, you have to have purple hair. 
So, when he and his wife go to have children, okay, they want to know what are the chances that their children will have purple hair. Well, if you know anything about the color purple, you know that it's a blending of red and of white. Okay? So, they're going to have both traits, but simultaneously showing up okay, and blending together. So, purple hair is going to be R and B. So, the father and the mother are both RB. What are the chances of their children also having purple hair? Okay? Well, if I do this cross, okay, and I just noticed there's a mistake here. Uh, this little R, apparently I forgot to change, this should be a B. Okay, so this should be big B, big B, in case you haven't figured that out. Okay, so the first offspring, if that were the case, okay, that offspring would have red hair and would go on to become a famous singer. Okay, the second offspring could have purple hair, but she's a girl, so girls can't be king. So, oh wait, I guess she could be queen, but she doesn't look too happy about the prospect of it. Okay, and then the third uh, chance for an offspring would also have purple hair. Um, living a very unique lifestyle. Okay, and then the last one is gonna have blue hair. So they have a 50% chance of their offspring having purple hair, okay? We'll do one more example with Great Danes. Now think about Great Danes. We've got a white one and a black and white one here. So what kind of dominance must this be? Well, obviously this is going to be the co-dominance where they're both showing up simultaneously. So that means the black and white dog is gonna be BW and the all white dog will be WW. So they have a 50% chance of having a puppy that is black and white, and then they have a 50% chance of having a puppy that is all white, okay? But it's impossible for these two to have an all black Great Dane, okay? Good, so to review, we had complete dominance. That was the thing we talked about last time, where the one completely covers the other. The purple flower, the purple gene covered the white gene, or the round seed covered the wrinkled seed, okay? So that's called complete dominance, because the dominant one completely covers uh, the recessive in heterozygous individuals, okay? The second one's incomplete dominance, okay, where they blend together, the, the dominant and recessive blend together in the heterozygous individual. That would be the flowers we talked about, the carnations, okay? And then co-dominance is when they're both dominant, so then they both show up in the heterozygous individual, but they are, like, it's a spotted, or there's a blending, but the two different colors are still separate. They're not mixed together, okay? So, again, that's pretty, that's, that's pretty much it for advanced genetics. Uh, if you have questions, feel free to contact me, jacobuski at gocathedral.com. Visit the website, visit the Twitter. Uh, but otherwise, go try those practice problems, and we'll see you next time when we talk about multiple alleles and sex-linked traits. Okay? Have a great day. Peace.